In this lecture, we continue with our discussion of the source superposition method and demonstrate how the method can be used for circuits that contain more than two independent sources and for circuits that contain one or more dependent sources. Let's take a look at a circuit that has three sources. A 2 amp current source, a 4 amp current source, and a 4 volt voltage source has three resistors and we'd like to solve for the voltage across this 4 ohm resistor and we call this V sub O. Well to use the superposition method the first thing we'll do is determine the voltage V O in the situation when only the 4 volt source is present. So in that case we replace the 2 amp current source and the 4 amp current source with open circuits. In essence we set the current supplied by those sources to zero and solve for VO. After that what we'll do is consider the, cir the circuit with only the 4 amp source. So we'll set the 4 volt voltage source and the 2 amp current source to zero. So the current source is replaced with an open the voltage source is replaced with the short and then we'll solve for V sub O. And then finally we'll consider the circuit with only the 2 amp current source. We'll set the 4 amp current source to zero and the 4 volt voltage source to zero. Replace the current source with an open circuit, the voltage source with a short circuit, and we'll solve for V O. And after we've solved for VO in those three circuits, then we can find, determine this voltage for the situation when all of the sources are present by adding the results for each individual source. And that's the superposition principle. Well, let's begin by keeping only the 4 volt voltage source in place. So we'll set the two current sources to zero, and in that case we'll have 4 volts across the series combination of the 1 ohm and 4 ohm resistors. So by voltage division we'll have 4 volts times 4 fifths or 16 fifths of a volt. So that's the voltage we'd see at VO due only to the 4 volt source when the other two sources are set to zero. Now we'll bring the other sources back in and we'll set the 4 volt and 2 amp sources to zero so we'll only have the 4 amp source. In this case the current that flows through the 4 ohm resistor because the 4 ohm and the 1 ohm are in parallel can be found by current division so that would be 4 amps times 1 fifth or 4 fifths of an amp. The resulting voltage then VO would be 4 fifths of an amp times that resistance 4 ohms which again would be 16 fifths of a volt. So the voltage VO due only to the 4 amp current source is once again 16 fifths of a volt. So now let's bring those sources back in and we'll set the 4 volt and the 4 amp source to zero keep only the 2 amp current source. Now in this case we've got a short a connection across the 1 ohm and 4 ohm resistor so we see no voltage across their combination and of course no voltage across either one. So with only the 2 amp source the output voltage is zero. So with all of the sources back in the superposition of the output would be the sum of the outputs or the voltages VO due to each individual and that adds to 32 fifths of a volt. Well rather than use the superposition method to solve for VO with three circuits, that is one circuit that had only the 4 volt source, one circuit that had only the 4 amp source, and one circuit that had only the 2 amp source, we could have instead solved for two VO in two circuits. One of the circuits, as we did before, could have had only the 2 amp source with the voltage source and the other current source set to zero. And then we could have solved for another circuit that had the 2 amp source set to zero, 
but the 4 amp source and the 4 volt source would have been in the circuit. In that case we'd have gotten a different value for VO in this for this situation, but we could have added that to the value we obtained for VO when we had only the 2 amp source and the superposition of those two results would have been the value for VO for the full circuit. And in fact superposition could work for four different circuits. You might try superposition where in each circuit you have one-fourth of an amp here, one-fourth of a volt, and one-half of an amp. And if you solve for those four circuits, which would all give the same value for VO, and then added them or equivalently multiply them by four, we'd obtain the appropriate value for the output voltage. So the big idea here is that we can solve for a variety of circuits, any number of circuits, but the key thing is that if we look at the contribution that we apply to each source and then we sum those contributions over the individual circuits, they all have to sum to the original source value. And although any of those types of methods would work, the most common way that people use superposition method is to apply all of the source voltage or current from one particular source while setting the others to zero and then rotate your way through the sources. That's the most common way that it's done, but it could be done in any way where the total combination of source values that you apply sum to the original source values. Well, let's take a look at another circuit that has two independent current sources, a 4 amp current source and a 2 amp current source, and one dependent voltage source. Now, if we'd like to solve for the voltage across this 2 ohm resistor, we've called that V sub O, we could use a variety of methods and what I'd like to show you here is how we could use the superposition method. Now when we apply the superposition method to a circuit that has a dependent voltage or dependent current source, what you'll want to do is treat the dependent source in the same way that we treat resistors in a circuit and that is we won't adjust the value of the dependent source. Now the reason for this is that dependent sources are more like resistors than they are like independent sources. For instance, the voltage across this dependent voltage source is twice the current through this branch of the circuit. Now if we look at the voltage across this resistor, it actually it happens to be twice the current through this resistor. So we could replace this resistor with a dependent voltage source with a voltage drop in the downward direction equal to 2ix which would look very much like this dependent voltage source. So the main point here is that when we adjust the values, so for instance if we're going to set this current source to zero and solve for the voltage VO with only this current source and then we set up another circuit where this current source is zero and we solve for VO when this current source is the only one present and then you superposition on those two results, we don't do that for the dependent voltage or dependent current sources. Treat them like you do resistors. So let's take a look at using the superposition method to solve for this voltage in this circuit. Well, we'll begin by setting the 4 amp current source to zero. And then I'll label two mesh currents. I'll call this one IO and I'll call this one I1. And then because of the 2 amp current source between I1 and IO, I can get the relationship that I1 is equal to IO plus 2. And then the current IX, well that's negative I1, so that would be negative I0 plus 2, or IO plus 2. Then I'm going to write one loop equation for the loop that goes all the way around the circuit. Well that'll be 2 times I1 minus 2IX, the voltage on the dependent source, and then plus 2IO, and that's all equal to zero. But I1 is I0 plus 2, and IX is negative I0 plus 2. If I make those substitutions, I'll have one equation in one unknown, the unknown current IO, and that's going to be 6IO is equal to negative 8 
or that current through the 2 ohm resistor is negative 4 thirds of an amp. So the voltage across that resistor would be twice that or negative 8 thirds volts. So for the 2 amp source only, VO is negative 8 thirds of a volt. Now let's look at the situation where we bring the 4 amp source in and set the 2 amp source to 0. I'll call this mesh current IO. I'll call this mesh current. Well, that's just equal to 4 amps because of the 4 amp source. So now I can see a relationship that IX is just going to be 4 minus IO. And now if I go around this loop and use Kirchhoff's voltage law, we'll see 2 IO minus 4, which is minus 2 times 4 minus IO because that's IX plus 2 IO is equal to 0. So I can group the terms on, I, on the current. That's 6 times the current is equal to 16. So the current will be 8 thirds of an amp. And that's the voltage then across the 2 ohm resistor. Will be 2 times that or 16 thirds of a volt. So now that voltage due only to the 4 amp source is 16 thirds of a volt. And now if we use the superposition when we have both sources present we'll get the sum of those two voltages and that'll be 8 thirds of a volt.